Good morning. How y'all feeling? Fantastic. Well, my name is Eric. It's nice to meet y'all. We're glad to have you with us. We got a pretty full house already so far. So why don't you guys do me a favor and slide in towards the center of the room. Help us out by making some seats on the ends for the folks still coming in. All right. And as you're doing that, why don't you say hello to somebody that's sitting around you that you may not recognize and we're going to keep on singing together.
My name's Dorothy Jolly, and I am one of the teammates here on Worship Arts Team, and uh, we welcome you. And um, in a moment, we're going to be giving, doing the giving, so you can get ready for that. And if you'd like to give online, you can go to lowcountrycc.org and click on the giving link, and you can also use your iPhone or your Android app. And however you give, we're very grateful for that. Um, This week is the second week of 40 Days in the Word. And uh, the Bible scripture for this week is, open my eyes to the wonderful things in your law. So as we meditate on that verse using the pronounced devotional method, uh, we might practice, uh, we might notice that we're asking God to reveal things, um, uh, something that he has put in motion and that he wants our, our response to. So, and as that relates to giving, maybe you can ask yourself, um, am I opening up myself? Am I trusting God or am I missing out on something that he wishes to provide for me, but I'm not fully trusting in it? And sometimes we do that with our finances. So, uh, as we relate this to giving, um, we do encourage you to give at LCC. But it's not because the church needs us. It's because we're giving because we're telling God that we trust you, that you are a provider, and we worship you. And um, as today, as you give, please give with a joyful heart. Not because you have to, but because you can, because you may, that because your heart really says that you'd love to give to God. Um, And I'd just like to say that may God bless you um, and as your eyes open up and uh, as he begins to give you wonderful things and share his love with you, 
uh, as he reveals his perfect word to you. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of you, the gift of your glory, the gift of these words that we're learning each week. It is such a blessing. And uh, help us to get things out of the way that may be getting in the, word, uh, getting in the way of, of your word. We ask to, for you to remove pride and um, arrogance and to remove distrust or, or jealousy or anger or, or any of our agendas that we may put in the way of you. And we, uh, we ask you, God, to reveal those things that we don't even know of. Uh, reveal those things to us so that we may get them out of the way and allow your word to permeate. May we put on your uh, generosity your love, your kindness, and your compassion. And we thank you so much for you. In the name of our Lord Jesus, amen. And if you could please stand and continue to worship as we give. No love is higher 
vast as the ocean. Here is love, here is love, vast as the ocean. Oh, here is love, vast as the ocean. Thank you, Father, that your love is vast as the ocean. Thank you for your loving kindness. We give our praise to you this morning, God. And the church said, amen. Y'all can have a seat. Tip of the tongue and the teeth of the lips. Hey, my name is Brian Coker. I've been attending Low Country for the last several years now. Over the last year, I've tried to pursue my relationship with Christ a little, a little harder, and I've done that through getting into the scripture a little more. This made a big difference in my spiritual walk with Christ. I'll be honest, I hate to read. When I get an email that's too long, I usually don't read it. The devil knows this, and he uses this to pull me away from the scripture. When I'm not in the word, my whole walk with Christ suffers. I'm not the spiritual leader that I should be. I'm not the man of God at work that I should be. But when I am in the word, I'm closer to what he wants me to be. I know there's got to be several of you out there like me who just hate to read, find it hard to sit down and open your Bible, but I challenge you to figure out a way that works for you, whether it be through the use of an app on your phone like I do or any other way, but get in the Word, pursue that relationship with Christ, and your walk with Him will be much better. Good morning. Good morning to those in the cafe as well this morning. So we continue our 40 Days in the Word series, but before I dive in, uh, Clothing Connection is this Saturday, and uh, here's what we need you to do. First of all, to come along on Saturday, but also during this week, there's a big need to get the whole thing set up and ready, and so if you're available to come and do that and join in with that setting up Monday through to Thursday from 9 a.m., probably till dark, um, come down. Maybe your group could do that together. Um, so if you need more information, go out there. There's a kiosk for the clothing connection out there today. You've got one of these in your worship folder, but it's next Saturday. It's a great opportunity for us to serve, but also to interact with the people in our community. Men, how many of us can relate to what Brian just shared on the video there? Raise your hands if you can relate to that. The rest of you just lying. I can relate to it. I can relate to it. So, so true. And today I'm going to talk about how does the Bible really change us? It changes us. Some of you need changing. I've seen you. Some of us need changing and some of us need situations to change and certain things to change. Well, I believe that the scriptures have the power to bring about change. Quite clearly, God's words can bring about change. I believe that. So today, I'm going to bring just four things. Your outline has five. I don't have time for five. I'm getting rid of number four. So on your outline, those of you who, but I have to fill in all the blanks. I'm going to have a bit of a twitch going on while I miss number four. If number four is a big deal to you, get over it. I'm not going to talk about it. You'll be okay. You will be okay. So we'll go number one, two, three. I'll say number four, but I mean number five. All right? That's how we're going to go on the journey. I could have given 400 things for how the Bible changes us. I'm going to go with four this morning. How does the Bible change us? Let's dive in. Fasten your seatbelts. Are we ready? Number one, it activates my faith. It activates my faith. Well-known scriptures today, Romans 10. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. So, faith is word activated. Okay? Faith is word activated. We hear that word, which is the word of Christ, and that's where our faith comes from. Because we hear something and we go, yes, that's what I need to believe. That's what I need to do. Our faith is word activated. I said it before, I'll say it again. When you open your Bible, you don't open it like you open an instruction manual. 
because most of you get a new appliance and the instruction manual goes in a drawer somewhere or never even breaks out of the plastic wrapper around it. But you don't read it for like an instruction manual. When you open the word, you open it to meet someone. It's relational. Believing God has got something to say to me today. He wants to talk with me and to me. And so we open the scriptures to meet someone. That changes so much about that. And our faith is activated when we hear the author of life speak to us. Because we go, ah, oh, that activates my faith so, so much. Now, it's become quite obvious to me that a lot of people just aren't confident. A lot of people aren't courageous. A lot of people don't take risks. A lot of people, people are fearful, not fearless. It's become quite obvious to me that a lot of people really are just flat out scared. Scared about life. Scared about the future. A lot of people are just around that in terms of confidence and having the ability to stand tall and stand strong. It's just not there. Now, God didn't intend us to live that way. But the people who live that way, what he's saying is, listen, you need to become a person of faith. Because if you become a person of faith, then that will activate all of those dynamics that in life right now you're struggling with. The confidence, the boldness, the courage, the strength, where you're facing a fearful situation to know that God's with you. You need faith to know that God is with you in all of that. So I need to be in the Word. Today I'm going to apply some of these by giving you some personal examples of how this has worked and benefited at different times. And We've been here for eight weeks now, and um, the last year, or just over a year really is what it is, has had its moments. It's had its moments, and some of those moments have been difficult moments, uh, painful moments, moments where we have these questions, why, when, where, what, how, really, are you crazy? All of, the, all of that stuff's been in there, and of course, it's landed at different levels for different members of my family at different times. And all of that has been around there, and what are we doing? And I know people over here were experiencing it, and this is just, ah, oh, and it was dark. And some of the people who we thought were our friends clearly decided not to be, and some of the people we thought weren't our friends clearly were. You know, we saw the best in people and the worst in people. That's just in the church, okay? And that's global, isn't it? It's not just an English issue. It's around. But in the middle of all of that, we had options, in the middle of all of that, we could have, you know, really, oh, what we're going to do, the whole deal. But because the word activates our faith, we dived into it. And here's one example, and they're not on your outline, they're just for you to listen to this morning. Isaiah 43, I said it again. If I ever say Isaiah 43, applaud, because I've said the word Isaiah how you say it instead of Isaiah how I say it. So, but I think there's only one book that sounds like it in the Bible, so we should be all right. Okay, Isaiah 43. Okay, that'll it. Okay, I'll make up for that, Isaiah 43. Verse 1, just verse 1 and 2. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you. Some of you have forgotten who God is. He created you, O Jacob. He who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, that was the Atlantic Ocean for us. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. And in the middle of a season like that, and you read those words, you go... Oh, yeah, it activates my faith. I have redeemed you. You are mine. It's like this. I sent my son for you. I'm going to be with you. I've called you to this. If I called you to it, I'll see you through it. This is what is the deal here. Get a grip, Des. Move on. 
take the next step, activated my faith amongst hundreds of other scriptures. But if you're not in the word and you're in that situation, all the best with that one. Makes such a difference. Listen what Jesus said with a guy who's very similar to us in Mark chapter 9. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. And here's what the, the dad says. He's just a dad. And he says to Jesus, but if you can do anything, Jesus, take pity on us and help us. Here's Jesus' response. If you can, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. I I'm with that. I do believe this is so true. And then, oh, I need strength. My unbelief kicks in. And we wrestle with that. So I've got to make room for faith. And I have to fill myself up with scriptures to push out the negative, to push out the unbelief. So there's no room for the unbelief. This week in your small group, you've learned the method of, of meditation through the pronounce it method. If you're not in a small group and you've not been doing your daily things each day, you're an idiot because it's life bringing. I never said that in a 10. Perhaps some of you are in here. Anyway, so I, this is what you need to do because it just helps so much. And it's helped me immensely this week. Now, the similar thing for me was I'd read that. And that scripture from Isaiah, that scripture would be, I would read it and reread it, then reread it, reread it, and then re 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 read it and keep, and I had scriptures that I would read and reread and re re read, and eventually it activated my faith so much that I went, I can do this. God is with me. I can take the next step. His word is true. And I needed to hear that and activate my faith. Because faith is word activated. That's what I needed. Number two, it stimulates my growth. How does it change me, change you, change us? It stimulates my growth. Now, 2 Timothy 3.16 is a verse we'll hear a lot throughout the 40 days because it's about the scriptures. It's important. I'm just going to teach you a little bit. I shared this with the Bible Institute class a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we're on again tomorrow night, and it's so awesome teaching people. If you're from Bible Institute, you're in my top 30 favorite people on the planet. <laughs> they didn't pay me to say that either. But I am there tomorrow night, so you may want to thank me. Anyway, all Scripture, all Scripture is God-breathed or God-inspired and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that, why? The man of God, the woman of God, the person of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I like to say this, so that you've got everything you need to take on life in the Word. You've got everything you need to take on life because life sometimes needs taking on, doesn't it? Sometimes we have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with life and take it on. Well, the Word has got everything we need to take on life. So if I'm not in the Word and I'm trying to take on life without the Word, why? Now, that verse to me speaks of two important things. It speaks that the scriptures are given for our belief and our behavior. So it says, all scripture is useful for teaching. What is it going to teach? Right belief, truth. We need the truth. We need to know what is the truth. What is God really saying? We need to be in the word to know that this is truth. It's useful for the truth. And that's something that brings strength into our life. So it's useful for right belief. Then it says rebuking. The scriptures also reveal wrong belief. Wrong belief. Words that bring life. And wrong belief that can lead to death and destruction. Words that we can stand on as a firm, solid rock foundation. And words that are just sinking sand. Useful for teaching truth and revealing, rebuking, False. Life, death. We need the word to know which. Then it also says correcting. This is to do with behavior. Correcting on this side, correcting wrong behavior. 
the word will reveal and convict us where this is not the way to go. Correcting wrong behavior and then training in righteousness. Right behavior, belief and behavior. You see, how you behave, your lifestyle, is completely connected to what you believe. We want to know what, if we want to find out what you believe, we just look at your life. Because the way you live is a direct relation to what you believe. And what you believe should be revealed in how you live. They are completely connected, belief and behavior. And so the scriptures are given for our lives to be built on something strong and to be activated in how we live life, belief and behavior, so that we will have everything we need to take on life. Everything we need. I don't know about you. I need quite a lot of things to help me with life. Everything we need is in here. Everything we need. Number three. It illuminates my mind. Just three verses from Psalm 119. Largest chapter in the Bible, but Psalm 119 talks about the word so much. Psalm 119 verse 130 says, The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. That's encouraging. I'm simple. It gives understanding. It gives light. It gives light. The verse we know from Psalm 119, verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. What is that? It's illuminating. It's the lamp and a light. It brings light. It brings understanding to the simple. On your keychains this week, week two, the verse is Psalm 119, verse 18. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. Open them that I may see. It illuminates my mind. Illuminates. How I like to paraphrase this whole illuminates my mind is this way. When we go into the word and we meet with God, he switches the light on. He turns the light on. You've got areas of your life right now that are dark, and we go through them, don't we? He needs someone to turn the light on. When we go to the Word, God, He turns the light on. Why would you not want that? Some of us need to have the light turned on. Again, for, from our life, there were times in this last year, and there's been times here, and we've had a bit of a heavy, dark-ish week as well, and it, it goes, it happens, and those of you who move now, that feels with the homesickness and everything else. But we went through times when we just couldn't see. We couldn't see which way to go. We couldn't feel it. We couldn't see a when. We couldn't even see a what at times. As I said before, the what, when, hi, wow, really, come on now. All of that was going on. And it was felt like darkness closes in at times. You know what it feels like? Darkness can close in and you feel, what's going on here? And we had dark days. I know some of you know what a dark day feels like. Well, then dark days turn to dark weeks, don't they? And then dark months, and it feels like a dark eternity. And you think, will it ever, ever change? You have an option when you're in the darkness. You can stay in there, or you can turn the light on. I'd like to say that I was the hero of the hour and resolved the situation, but I wasn't. What happened in our home was that my wife turned the light on one day. One day... We were in this season, and it was, oh, what do we do? And we were just fighting on, and one day she turned the light on. She came home one day, and she'd been in the scriptures, and she decided to start something. And what she decided to do was she got a big kind of pad of sticky notes, and what she read in the word that God had said to her, she wrote down on a sticky note. And she put the sticky note up in the house somewhere. Over a few weeks, the whole house was filled with sticky notes. I mean Filled. You walked into our house, the kitchen cupboards all had sticky notes on them. Not just your fridge, that was an easy place to put them. Every kitchen cupboard, the front door, the back door, windows, everything, you, the bathroom was filled with sticky notes. Okay, you could not go into any room without seeing sticky notes. But the sticky notes all were lights. That's what they were. It was God turning the light on all over the home. 
And whenever you went in, in a dark situation with a dark feeling, you couldn't go and make coffee without going, oh, come on, Des. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. He turns the light on. He turns the light on. And that, I'm telling you now, that got us through. When the word filled our home, literally, with the sticky notes. And then just this week, when it was just a tough week, I got in touch with my feminine side. I got in touch with my feminine side, and I was in the devotions in your 40 days in the Word workbook with the Pronounce It method, which, come on, guys, you've only got that much room to write anyway. We can do that, which is great. I hate it when they give you a full page to fill. So a little bit, and it's really impacted me, and I thought, I know what's needed in this home right now. So I got a pad of sticky notes, and I wrote day one, I wrote the scripture out, and I stuck it on a cupboard. And day two, and I stuck it on a cupboard, right above the coffee machine, which is where I go the most in the kitchen. I needed a light to be in my home. It illuminates my mind. And God seems to only reveal enough light for the next step. Have you ever noticed that? Why can't God, you turn the light on and the whole journey be clear? You know why? Because if you could see it, you would run the other way. That's the truth of it. But he gives us enough light to take the next step. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. He always gives us just enough for the next step. What's your next step? And is the light on? What's your next step? Is God telling you, just trust me in this? Let him turn the light on and absorb yourself. Number four. So the word changes me because it activates my faith. It stimulates my growth. It illuminates my mind. And number four, which is number five in your outline, is, oh, for the blank, number four is it elevates my mood. But I'm not going to talk about it. So fill your blank in. You're all right now. Okay, number five. It liberates my potential. I want to talk about this because I see this being missed by too many Christ followers. It liberates my potential. Now, we're all familiar with John chapter 8 and the teaching of Jesus and what he says. We're familiar, but... Let's just go there briefly. John 8, 31, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if, big word, two letters, big, if, if you hold to my teaching, the word, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You know the verse, you think it's true, why are you not living it? Why are so many of us bound up still? When if, if we hold to my teachings, one translation says, if you continue in my word, then you'll be my disciples, but then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. There's a new gym opened in, uh, in Bluffton over near Staples Way called Fit, F-I-T. And emblazoned on one of their walls, and I think on their website as well, is a quote. And when I saw it, I thought, that's an interesting quote. What does it mean? Do I agree with it? And I'm drawn to quotes. When you're a communicator, you're drawn to quotes. I looked at it, and I thought about it. I thought, I think I agree. I do agree. That's a good quote. Got me. It's all across a big wall in the gym. So when you're killing yourself in the gym, there's this thing there, and you're thinking, wow. But here's the quote up on the screen now. It's taken from the website. To be inspired is great. To inspire is incredible. I think, hmm, that's interesting. Really, really interesting. To be inspired is great. To inspire is incredible. And when you're kind of beating yourself up physically in a gym and you're like, oh, why am I doing this? You're asking the question, why am I doing this to myself? Why? And I just went on a journey. Why am I alive? What am I here for? Come on, why? What is my life really all about? And I looked at that quote, and to be inspired is great. You see, today, yes, we want to inspire you with the word. I want you to be inspired. And to be inspired is great, but it's nowhere near as great and as amazing as if you then become an inspiration. If you all get inspired and it just stays in here, oh, fine. But the purpose that the Son of Man said, look, so you will know the truth and the truth will set you free, is not so you're now free. Oh, thank you, I'm free now. All right. 
Nobody else needs to know that. I'm free. It's okay. I'm, I'm all right. The purpose is so that you'll be free. It's so that other people see that freedom and say, I want what he's got. God wants to liberate. He wants to redeem his creation. And we're his hands and feet. So if you are inspired, you are then called to be an inspiration. You all get to be incredible this week if you live out the freedom that God gives you when you engage in his word. That is so, so, so important. That's what we're meant to be. When people look and say, I want to be like them. Quite literally, some people might say, whatever he's smoking, give me 20. Not literally, okay. But it's that idea, that concept. The world's craving that. To see a people who will grab hold of the truth in the word, allow it to set them free. I tell you, if all of you leave here today, not just inspired, but become an inspiration, that's an unstoppable force. And the kingdom of God will forcefully advance if a people embrace the movement of God. If, if we continue with his teaching. If we do, it'll liberate your potential. And only God knows your full potential. Not your husband, not your wife, not your parents, not your teacher, not your boss. They can see some of your potential. But only God knows really why you are here. Only God knows your unlocked greatness. Too many Christians are living life, oh, just okay. Average, mediocre, bland, gray, lukewarm. That's not what the scriptures call us to live like. It calls us to live life fully alive. And he sees greatness locked up inside of you, and God knows what you're capable of. We need to spend time in God's word so we can get out of the boxes that everybody else puts us in. The expectation that's on people. We need to get out of them. We really do. And we only get out of them by sticking in with God's word. And that, ah, this is the truth. And this truth will set me free. I need to land the plane. So, you may have found those four points quite inspiring today. Oh, yeah, I need to do that. Yes, but how? I always, after every message, whenever anybody's preaching or I'm reading a book, I always say one of two things. So what? Or YBH. That's very good, but how do I do it? How do I do that? Sometimes we get all fired up with nowhere to go. Yeah? All the gear, no idea. We get all that, don't we? Sometimes, oh, what do I do next? Yes, but how? Very quickly today. The reason that we're doing 40 days in the Word is to put you through boot camp. It's to give you a boot camp that stimulates, that activates our growth in the Word. That gives us a, a routine, a way of saying, I need to be in the Word. Because if all this is true, which it is, if we all need our faith activating, our growth stimulating, our minds illuminating, and, and our potential liberating, then we need to get all of us in the Word. We're doing 40 days in the Word for that reason. Why? Because number one, we need to learn it. Mark 12, 24, is Jesus really saying, the danger you're in is because you do not know the Word. We need to learn the Word. Be it easy, memorize scriptures, daily devotional, in your group, all ways we need to do that. This week in your small group, you're going to be learning the devotional method of how to have your own personal time with God in the scriptures. You know that word which some of us guys go, <clears throat> that word, quiet time? Oh, we go, quiet time, I'd rather stick pins in my eyes. You know what I mean? Oh, it's a bit, it's more I feel guilty time. Okay, but actually it's not, I'm opening it to meet someone. This is a liberating lifetime. And we're going to learn in your small groups how to do that. A man's going to teach us, guys, how to do that. The women get it. They're far more intelligent than us. And they're brilliant at this. And I didn't get paid a penny to say that by any female. It's the truth. But that's this week. Why do you want to miss your group? It's going to bring life to you. Number two, I need to accept the word as my authority. I mean, 1 Thessalonians 2.13 paraphrases, he commends the church in, of the Thessalonian church and says, look, the good thing is you didn't just accept this word as words of men, but as the word of God. 
This is not a self-help book. This is not some, ooh, five easy tips how to be better at gardening. It's not, it's not a self-help book. This is life, and I need to do a big important step. I need to recognize that it is my authority. What that means is this. Jesus, you lead. You lead. Now, to some of you control freaks, that freaks you out. Jesus, you lead. This is my authority. I'll follow this way. You lead, I'll follow. You drive the car. That's what it means to accept the word as my authority when I trust the word to lead me. Number three, yes, but how is this? Learn it, accept it as my authority, act on it. John 13, 17 says, now you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. That's what it says. Now you know these things, the blessing only comes when you do them. Who doesn't want to be blessed? Who wants to be blessed? The road to blessing is living the word. And we need to do them. And I don't know about you, but every single day this week, going through your devotional in 40 days of the word, how does it apply to your life? It's like, how does he know this is so applicable to my life right now? Every single day, there'll be an application and God will reveal, you know what you need to do. Then do it because God will bring a blessing when we act on his word. I'm going to close today. But yes, there's just four things, and there's so much more and more and more beyond in his scriptures. We're going to sing a new song to, to Low Country. It's not a new song. It's a year or so old. But it's a new song here on a Sunday morning. And when I found out we were doing this song, and the band can make your way up now, when I found out we were doing this song, I thought, wow, so apt. About the last six months or so, this song is... I'd go out for a run and I'd have it on my iPod and people would have thought, there he goes again, that weird guy. And I'd be running and just declaring this song as I was running. I was like Rocky Balboa, you know, in the street. No, I wasn't. The song's called Whom Shall I Fear? It's a Chris Tomlin song. Well, listen to the words. They're all scripture. And you'll see how it applies to what we've heard today. So we sing this song now to anchor all that we've learned today. But let me ask you a question. Has God spoken to you today? Has God used the words of a simple Englishman today to say something to you? Then act on it. Act on it. And the song starts with this. You hear me when I call. You are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield, though troubles linger still. Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. And it says further on, and nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promises. You don't know his promises, what you're holding on to. I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful. You are faithful. And so take this time now to anchor what we've heard and to declare it. To declare it. Let's stand and I'll pray. And then we'll worship and declare this song together. Heavenly Father, oh, we thank you for your word. And we declare now in the name of Jesus that your word, we believe, God, will activate our faith. Lord, come and activate the faith of everybody in this room today. We believe, Lord, that your word and your word alone can stimulate our growth. Lord, come in and affect the belief and behavior of everyone in this room. And we know and we believe, Lord, that your word can illuminate our mind. Lord, turn the light on in all the dark places in our lives. Help us to open your word to bring light into our dark situations. And Lord, we know your word will liberate our potential. Lord, set us free as we continue in your word. Set us free. Lord, set us free in worship in this song now. Liberate us. Let us break out and declare these truths that you are faithful. 
We have nothing to fear because you're right by our side. And Lord, most of all, may we, as we go into your word this week in these 40 days, may we allow the word to change us so that you are glorified and you are known as the one who's transformed us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week.
have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday morning.